Thank you. Uh, so basically when we think of treating a child with or a patient with allergy, I think that as we saw in the first talk, it depends on what is the type of allergy and what is the severity of this allergic eye disease so that we can accordingly manage our patients better. Uh, if you look at these flowcharts, you might find there are several ways you can target the allergy. However, in private practice or in practice, sometimes we resort only to steroids, and I think that is something that all we need to rethink uh, how we should treat them more optimally. The problem is that if you over-treat your patient and you have a nice white eye, no symptoms, the patient is pretty comfortable, you might have uh, side effects of treatment and uh, the patient might lose vision with glaucoma or cataract. On the other hand, if you under-treat your patient, you will have inflammation which will persist and you will have tissue damage and this can itself cause nimble deficiency and corneal scarring. So either way, uh, it's a difficult challenge and we have to balance our treatment strategy so that we are able to uh, neither lose vision due to uh, any of these factors and uh, maintain the situation. Typically what happens in mo most practices is that uh, we tend to give a course of steroids in a paper. Uh, the child and the parents are pretty happy and then once the steroids are stopped, there is again a recurrence of disease because as we understand we are not looking at curing the disease by giving uh, any of these immunosuppressive drops. Uh, the child comes back to you, you again repeat it. This can happen for a few times and then the child will go to the next neighboring doctor and again such things might continue. I think what we need to do as a doctor is to understand what is the course of disease. We need to look at what were the past treatment and response, judge the periodicity and severity of disease. And once you have answers to some of these, try to counsel the anxious patient because most of them are extremely anxious uh, it's very important to set up what expectations are there from uh, your treatment so that we can look at long-term management of inflammation uh, in a safe manner and for this we need to use a step ladder approach. So this is just a little bit about, uh, I would spend a fair amount of time trying to understand what has happened in the past because I would see many of these patients who have had months or years of treatment before landing up in my clinic so typically if you have a patient who has used surface steroids and had a complete uh, response to the steroids, however the disease recurs within a few days of stopping the steroid, I know probably it's a little bit of a moderate form of VKC, maybe a chronic form, whereas if the uh, patient responded well but and there was no recurrence for a few months, maybe it's an intermittent variant where you give a mild steroid, the child is okay, a few months down the line there is a recurrence of the inflammation. On the other hand, if there has been absolutely poor response to a surface steroid alone, you know you are dealing with something which is fairly severe inflammation and if there is a partial response again, this could be a moderate form of disease. On the other hand, if the child has used potent steroid, has had a good response to a potent steroid, and the disease comes up as soon as you stop the potent steroid, you again know you are looking at a fairly severe form of disease. However, again, there will be some who may show a response for a few months and then come back. So these could be some of the intermittent varieties. So just by looking at the history and all the old papers, sometimes you have a clue as to what you are going to treat in this given child. And basically, I think what we need to follow is try to use a system whereby we can document all the signs at every visit, try to grade the severity of disease and based on that formulate what will work best for that given patient. So you could have a child or a patient who has mild disease or maybe even the seasonal allergies will come here where you don't have any corneal involvement, it's just uh, some amount of symptoms are reaching along with congenital pathology. Whereas you have more severe forms of allergy where you have corneal involvement uh, cobblestones and in the most severe forms you could have shield ulcers, corneal scarring and uh, limbal failure. Also you will have a subset of patients who have had past allergy who now have a burnt out ocular surface disease and may not truly have allergy but they have uh, surface problems more because of past inflammation which might need to be tackled a little differently like other than an acute inflammatory process. So our treatment
enforcement algorithm has to be based on what we are looking at. Basically, the concept is that if it's an intermittent form of LRV, you could safely use a mild steroid or a steroid maybe once in a few months and you can get away with it. But whenever you come across a situation where there is a chronic disease, a 365 day disease, you need to look at steroid sparing agents and you can use cyclosporine which can be formulated at higher concentrations than the commercial cyclosporine. And now more luckily we have capital MS so you may not need to make all these drops and you can try and control the disease. Of course the very severe forms of disease will require steroids, potent steroids uh, and higher strengths of uh, steroid sparing agents. And the extreme uh, cases might need even systemic treatment and surgical intervention. Now when you're looking at something which looks like a severe form of allergy, which is not responding to your routine medications, you need a pretty high dose of medications. Always consider, if possible, to do an allergy testing and consider immunotherapy if you have access to a good uh, a person who can manage these children along with your uh, medical treatment. So uh, basically, as you can see here, uh, what you can do is that if there is just conjunctival involvement, there is no need to give steroids. You can usually manage them just with martial stabilizers, dual acting drugs, and so on. Uh, if you have intermittent disease, you can try such as steroids in short pulses. If you have chronic disease, try to use steroid sparing therapy along with maybe a very low maintenance dose of a surface acting steroid. Whereas in severe and blinding forms of disease, you'll have to be more aggressive with steroids uh, topically and sometimes systemically as well. So the objective of recording signs and symptoms at each visit is that you can follow a step ladder pattern of therapy. Because we know that the allergy can fluctuate either because of the natural course of the disease, we know it could be seasonal, and also because of effect of the medical treatment. So as the allergy goes severe, go up the ladder, as things get better, you can start going down the ladder and try to balance it. So uh, if you use this type of treatment, you can probably avoid over or under medication and try to treat them optimally. So steroids do have a role. They are very useful when there is an acute episode, when there is a very severe form of EKC, and we usually use a pulsed approach of steroids rather than using continuously a very high dose for a long period of time. There are also other patients who may be maintained with a, a steroid sparing therapy but have a little bit of a persistent inflammation where you might use a low dose uh, maintenance topical steroid. In general, it's better to use a soft steroid if it works rather than uh, directly using a potent steroid. It's good to maintain and monitor usage. Uh, and it's easier said than done, but it's very difficult to monitor intraocular pressure in children because they may not cooperate, they may be very photophobic, so you need to be careful, especially if they're going to use it for a longer period of time. And the steroid response is much higher in children than in adults, uh, and this has been shown. And also, of course, you need to be remembering that you can end up in a cataract. So if you have a very young child who uh, has got severe and chronic form of allergy, I think we need to be very careful with steroid usage, especially if there is a possibility that the child may disappear and self-medicate or reduce uh, these drops. Cyclosporin can be reconstituted from the injectable preparation or we also have orosporin, uh, which can be uh, titrated to the desired concentration that we require and cyclosporin has been found to be fairly stable in artificial tears. Uh, basically, we use it as a steroid sparing agent. Again, this can be continued on a long-term basis in patients who have chronic allergy for a very long period of time, and up to seven years of continuous usage has been reported in the literature. And in addition to its uh, anti-inflammatory property, it's also anti-fibroblastic. So we, you see a lot of hypertrophic changes in VKC which may be uh, sort of suppressed by using these drops. Uh, for, for many of us, uh, or for many patients who cannot access coming to a clinic repeatedly to get these drops formulated, patrolimus is a great uh, uh, advantage and this can now be prescribed because they are readily available in the market. And uh, uh, the only issue is, of course, there may be a little bit uh, tolerance is in one of the problems that you might see. But uh, definitely, again, this can be used on a long-term basis and probably uh, a good steroid sparing agent which is now available to us. Some
Sometimes you come across these type of children where you feel as if uh, you are losing the battle and the child might lose vision. Uh, in some of these situations, you might have to use a systemic agent for long-term management. Uh, however, this should always be managed with an immunologist or a rheumatologist. Uh, the doses we use are much lower than organ transplant dose, just to say that that would be relatively more safer. And uh, so basically, if we treat our patients well, it's very, very rare that we'll require all these systemic management or systemic medication. However, when you have a situation, uh, for example, you have an emergency situation of a poorly managed VKC, as you can see at point three, you might have to use steroid. For example, I would give you, let's say a patient has come with a shield ulcer, we have given a cyclotarsal steroid, we have debrided, still not healing, you might give a little bit of oral steroid. Or then you have a patient who has extremely severe disease requiring too much of uh, topical steroid, not getting control, getting recurrent shield ulcers, limbal uh, uh, deficiency, you might use a systemic cyclosporin. Similarly, if you have done reconstructive surgery in some of these children or these patients, you might have to use systemic medication. Otherwise, the indications are fairly rare. If you treat them uh, and keep monitoring, hopefully you don't require such strong medication. So there is another subset of patients who have uh, VKC adult onset. So we know VKC in childhood continues into adulthood, but if you have a new onset of VKC in an adult, you need to rule out HIV infection because here the treatment is not immunosuppression, but to use antiretroviral therapy and this is something that we have to keep in mind. Shield ulcer, Dr. Somashila has discussed, depending on the grade of shield ulcer, what you need to do. So this is just the supportive therapy which, you, uh, which will be very helpful especially in milder forms or as an add-on in severe allergies where you might use uh, 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 the dual acting agents which are quick in action and uh, they have good long-term uh, effects so you don't need to use them very frequently. And uh, similarly you could use in certain situations oral antihistaminics and there are a lot of systemic allergy also going on along with it. And, uh, Oral leukotriene inhibitors have limited benefits. Nasal allergy is uh, associated. Usually nasal uh, steroid sprays definitely help to control even the ocular uh, allergy to some extent. Cold compresses are extremely important to stop the child's uh, hand going on to the eye and rubbing and uh, then getting into astigmatism and other problems. Lubricants, preservative free, very helpful to flush allergens from the ocular surface. Uh, they must use uh, hygiene, avoidance measures and protective glasses, these are something that we all need to use in all patients of allergy. And as I said, immunotherapy could be tried in very severe forms of allergy. Uh, it's the only treatment that can change the uh, natural course of allergic eye disease. And uh, some of these complications require surgery, as Dr. Somashila has discussed. And these are some of the avoidance measures that one can try. And it's an endless list and you could keep doing it may not see much effect, but uh, I think they're worth trying. So I thank all of you for the, your patient hearing, and uh, if there are any questions, definitely address it here. Thank you.